Good morning, boys. Good morning. Good morning. And then you also need. You guys ready? Good morning. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Hold on. I want to see if I can change your name. How do you change the name? How's you guys feeling? You guys excited to sp yeah. to spoke with Kaka? Yeah. Hey guys. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Adrian, he's not South African this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next best thing, Brazilian thing. Morning, guys. Morning, Freddy. Morning, Freddy. Who's that? Yeah. Yeah. You've done your hair this morning. <laughs> who, who has Fred? Yeah, Freddy. He's looking good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut I'm gonna have to cut mine myself. <laughs> I'm just going to shave it. I just brush it to the. Have you, have you ever had a shaved head, Tommy? Like all the way or no? Yeah, I had a, like a two, a one or a two, man. Yeah, yeah. But I've never done it myself. I'm not like, because I, I see like what Adrian does to his and it looks disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. Uh, ah, you're, you're looking smart, Fred. You've dressed up for the occasion. That's it. He's trying to get a phone number, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he has it. I bet he went to the Costco, man, to shopping. Yeah. Oh. You have to wear mask and a mask everywhere. Man. I don't see uh, Gabe and William. Yeah. No Gabe, no William. Oh my God. Oh, William is playing pedra. Ah, William. Gleb, where does uh, Kaká live now? Does he live in Brazil or does he live in Europe or where? He's in this, in, I think he's living in Sao Paulo now. Yeah. Yeah. We still meet from Will and Gabe. What what they are. Oh. He has here. No. All right, guys, uh, let's go start and then uh, we try to put a game conversation, all right? Uh, first, guys, uh, I want to introduce um, the play we have today. It's a big plan of mine. We play on the, on the same time. Uh, we both play on the World Cup 2002. 
uh, and then he's a he turned out like a very big soccer player. And then I think that's an amazing opportunity to to join with us and uh, to talk a little bit uh, about his career, a little bit when they start the academy, right? And then I also want to introduce uh, uh, for Kaká, our owner, uh, our director, uh, Tommy Wilson. He's in that conversation. Also, we have uh, like a couple guys uh, from the our staff, right? But uh, Kaká, thank you very much for joining with us, okay? That's the group who work in the U12 for Philadelphia Union. I'll be coach for them for two years. And then uh, we try and, and that, and that period is like, so difficult for everyone. We try to put like a talk with a couple players so they can share the experience they have in a soccer. And then, very good to, to have you here. Thank you for joining us, Kaká. Hello, Kaká. Hello, guys. Good morning. Hi, Cleverson. It's good to talk to you, my friend. Yeah. We <laughs> saw here in Brazil, they, they brought broadcasting the, the final, the World Cup final 2002, the last Sunday. So everybody was talking about Cleverson. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to see your coach playing. But he was an amazing player, and he gave us in 2002 the, the World Cup with the, the other big players there. So it's a pleasure for me to be here and talk to you a little bit. So Philadelphia for three years was a very good uh, rival. And I have a good friend in Philadelphia as well. So congratulations, guys. I think you are in a good city a good place to to start your career and your dream so i don't know cleverson how you're gonna uh take this questions or uh, just talk let me know what your okay. advice for that and guys i'm here and whatever you guys want to know and to share just let me know okay first i just want to just tell me tell me you want to say something to kaka is our director yeah, uh, Kaká, thank you very much for um, so, with, with someone as famous as you, and I, and I, I, I use that term advisedly. Uh, I'm sure that you're busy uh, with many requests every day. Um, so to give up your time to speak to us, uh, we, we feel a real honour for that. You know, we, we get used to having a World Cup winner in our presence with, with Cleverson uh, on a daily basis. Um, and when he mentioned that you would join us, we were absolutely delighted and excited. And the boys are, uh, I know they feel the same. So welcome. Um, and I think if, if it's okay with you, we'll just start some questions. For me, it's good, Tommy. Thank you very much. For me, it's, it's okay. Who want to say that? Want to ask the first question for Kaka, boys? I do. <laughs> Um, Go ahead, Jamir. Did you play tennis at all? Did you play tennis? <laughs> What's he saying? Could you ask him to play you. tennis? Yeah. Who's on the Kakata sign now? Yeah, you can hear us, Kaka. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Jambir, can you, could you make a question again, please? Did you play tennis? If I play tennis? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I do play tennis. Uh, yeah. I love sport in general. So now when I stop, when I retired, I, I decided to run because I, I love to run and I want to, to do a marathon. So now I'm training for that, for a marathon. I hope I can do that at the end of the, this year. In meanwhile, I also like to play other sports. I try to play soccer once a week. I try to play tennis twice a week and I love to play golf, but here in Brazil it's not easy to play golf. 
So most of the times I play golf when I go to US, I usually go to Florida. I still have a place in Orlando. So every time that I go to Orlando, I used to play to play golf as well. Awesome. Who has another question, boys? I do. I do. Go ahead, guys. Um, out of your many accomplishments, which one are you most proud of? James, could you could you repeat again and a little bit of a slow? <laughs> Out of your many accomplishments, which one are you most proud of? Uh, I love the World Cup 2002 because I think the World Cup is the best thing that a player can achieve, a soccer player. So I think the World Cup is the best one for me. Of course, I, I love to say that I won the Champions League, the FIFA World Cup for clubs, the Scudetto in Italy, La Liga in Spain. Uh, this is the big achievements that I have in my career. And individual, as a uh, individual player, the Ballon d'Or and the best player of the world in 2007. I think these achievements are the, the best ones in my, in my career. Thank you. Who has a matter, guys? I do. I have a question. Um, where do you keep the Ballon d'Or that you won? I keep the Ballon d'Or here in Brazil. So let let me get it for you. So you can take it just a second. Oh, look at you guys! You guys want to see the Ballon d'Or for who? Let Let me get it. <laughs> <laughs> We can paint the one. So here, let me see if I can show you that. Oh, look at that, boys. That's amazing. There you go. I'll wait to see this. So the year, my name, and I keep it here at home. So sometimes I, I go to visit him and talk to him a little bit. So <laughs> that's awesome. Go ahead, boys. Don't be shy, guys. Uh, I have like, a question. I to talk to him. What did it feel like to win the World Cup? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Uh, I I was twenty years old. I was the the little one in the in the team. So it was my first World Cup. After that, I played also two more in 2006 and 2010. But when you have the, that feeling to win the World Cup, it's just, it's just amazing. You are in the top of the world, so we, we, win, we win the World Cup. So let's, let's lift, lift it up the, the trophy, let's celebrate. And we had an amazing group. We're still in contact until today. So it's very nice to to talk with these guys and remember the, the, the time that we were there and win the World Cup is, is just amazing. It's unbelievable. I think you guys, how old are you guys now? 12, 11, 12. 11, 12. So uh, the next World Cup in US is 2026, right? Yeah. A few of you will be 18. So it's a, it's a good thing to dream of, to be in the World Cup in your country. Yeah, that's the big challenge for you guys. You guys have a lot of 
join us. Uh, Kaká started to play very young, guys. He's like, I think he, you was 18 or 19 years old when you were World Cup, Kaká? Yeah, my, dip, my debut with Sao Paulo was, I was 18 years old. And then two years later, I went to the World Cup in, in Japan, in Korea, in 2002. And then also, we, we feel so special because um, when I'm me and Kaká won the World Cup, we have, a, we have a, the opportunity to, to learn with like top players in the world and uh, amazing players and amazing friends like Kaká Major that talk in, the, in that meeting. Our group is uh, it's amazing. We have a, like a nice guy when they. they they want to everyone engage in, a, in that period and the World Cup. And like he said, we still keep it, keep it touch. That's an amazing group, guys. Who has another question? I do. Um, go ahead, boys. Do you, do you have a trophy cabinet at home? Do I have? Sorry? A trophy cabinet? Like trophy you... cabinet. No, I... I try to keep the, the most important uh, trophies uh, here so I can see the, a replica of the World Cup, a replica of the Champions League, the Scudetto, the Ballon d'Or, the FIFA World Player of the Year. So these are some trophies that I, I keep here at home. And then I have a place that there are, I have a lot of things. Jerseys, uh, shoes, uh, balls, and other trophies, medals, a lot of things that I, like a personal museum. So it's not at home, it's in another place, but I, I try to, to keep everything that, I, that is really important for me. Go ahead, boys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I have a question again. Um, two things. Happy early birthday, by the way. Thank um, you. <laughs> and I've seen a couple of clips of you playing, and you're really fast, strong, and smart on the ball. When you're sprinting you, and somebody's like about to bump into you, you don't fall at all. Do you train for that? If so, can you send me some of them workouts? <laughs> I think I think it's really important for you to understand what is your strength and your weakness. And I I don't like to say that you have to to balance that. So I prefer and I preferred in my career to to uh, focus in the things that I was very strong and training very hard with that. And the things that I, I were really weakness, just to improve that a little bit. So I, I wasn't, I, I'm right foot. So I trained a little bit my left foot, just to, during the game, I can shoot, I can pass, but it's not the, the best uh, shoot that I have with my left foot. But it was okay. I scored some goals with my left foot. But I really wanted to improve and work and focus on my strength. So uh, I was fast, speed, dynamic, and I wasn't really strong. So I had to improve my, my shoot. So I create or I took this little problem that I wasn't so strong as an opportunity to learn how to just place the ball. So if you see a lot of goals that I scored, I just placed the ball because I, I, I couldn't uh, shoot so uh, powerful shoots. So I said, let's try to just be very, very good to place uh, the ball. So during my early years in a grass, grassroots, I tried to improve the, those qualities and I worked very hard for, uh, with that. And then when you are very confident with your power, if you are uh, strong, you, the, the players will try to, 
to beat you, to put you down. And it's just, it's just a kind of a mindset. When I went to in Brazil, it's very uh, common that a player just when they suffer some uh, bump or some uh, uh, just uh, some uh, when a, a player comes to comes to you, they just fall down. In in Europe, it's it's quite a, a impossible to to have that. When I went to Italy. Uh, I tried to, to do something of that, just fall down sometimes. The referee just say, keep playing, keep playing, it's not a fall. So I, I, I learned how to, to, be, to stand up and just got hit and keep going. So after that, uh, it was really good and it's really nice because you can take advantage of a lot of situations with that. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, who was your favorite teammate you played with? Uh, my favorite, it's, it's hard to say because I have a lot of very good teammates. But the best one that I've ever played with is Ronaldo Fenomeno. So Ronaldo, he was unbelievable. He, he was incredible because... What we say that it's a good player is someone that can think and can uh, do what he thinks. So when, when you see a player thinking of a play or an action and he can execute that, this guy is amazing. So this is why Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, they, they are very, very amazing because they can think and they can execute that. A lot of uh, players, they can think they cannot execute and a lot of other players they can't uh, think so fast but they can run they can do other things when you combine these things you see a very very good player and now in these days you guys can see cristiano messi neymar these guys just think and execute it's like a it's normal just flow and in my time it was ronaldo phenomenal the thing that I, I saw that guy doing is just unbelievable. Sometimes we discuss training with how these guys did that, how he could think about this this thing. So Ronaldo Phenomenal was the best for me. Yeah, good to talk there, Kaka, because we, we have a, a last week with Fortune. And then uh, he say he said for us the same thing about Ronaldo. And then I asked try to tell the boys about like a Ronaldo. We played with him and then um, everything is clear when I say that. He's he's unbelievable player. His qualities um, is is um, very higher than normal, no? And then uh, very quickly to remember on the World Cup 2002, he has like a surgery on the knee and then he's still playing at a, a high level. That's a great name to talk. Guys, we have another question, boys. I, I do. Go ahead, guys. Um, did you ever play any other positions besides attacking midfielder? Can you repeat that for me, please? Uh, did you ever play any? Pos did you ever play any positions besides attacking midfielder? Uh, I I started my career as a forward, number nine, and because I was very very tiny guy. I had a problem when I was your age. I had two years uh, uh, problem with two years of my, my, my growing. So when I was 12, 13, 14, 14, my body is a, it's like a, a body for a boy under 11, 12. So because of that, my coach just changed my position. I was number nine and he put me as a number eight as a midfielder. And after that, I just played as a midfielder my, my whole career. But I just played in these two positions, midfielder and forward. Go ahead, boys. I have a question. Who was the hardest player you ever played? Who was the? Hardest player you've ever played in your career. 
Well, we played we, we played against a, a lot of good players, and uh, I could say Zidane. When I played in 2006, the World Cup, Zidane did an amazing World Cup, and I think Zidane was the, the toughest one. I, I played against Messi as well, and I could say Messi. But uh, so I'll say these two guys, Messi and, and Zidane. Uh, I have a question. Uh, who did you have any thoughts on Ronaldo's haircut when you first got it? <laughs> you mean Ronaldo in 2002? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was well, that. That was a very funny story about that because Ronaldo, he's a media guy, so everything that Ronaldo did or still doing, it's a uh, it's a news. So everything that Ronaldo does, it's it's. Uh, put on the news and everybody wants to, to say about uh, what he's eating, what about his belly, about his family, about <laughs> and, and, and everything. Yeah. So in that period, Ronaldo had a small, he just had a small injury in his leg and the press started a little bit to talk about that. So the game was Sunday. So Friday, they uh, he didn't train. And uh, the press started to, to say something about the injury. Maybe Ronaldo is not playing on Sunday or something like that. And he, he, he did this amazing creativity story. So he just cut his hair in that way that it's awful. But in the other day, nobody was talking about his leg anymore. Everybody was talking about his hair. So he... He, with this amazing idea, he's changed the focus, not in his injury anymore, but everybody was talking about his hair. So in that way, he was very uh, easy and quiet to focus on the game. So let everybody talk about my hair. I'll focus on the game. And on Sunday, he scored two goals and gave us the World Cup. I have a question. Which was the hardest team that you've played? Uh, I played against uh, a few very toughest, uh, tough teams. Uh, at the time that I was in Milan, I played against Barcelona a few times. We, we kind of challenged in Champions League two, three years. So it was very hard to play against Barcelona. Inter de Milan was a very good team to challenge as well. In the national team, I think it's Argentina. We had a very, very good games and challenge. And I'll say these three. Argentina with the national team and Barcelona and Inter de Milan. I have a question. Uh, how do you keep your head in the game instead of your surroundings? Uh, at the time, for us, I, I can say that for me and for Cleverson, because we we in a different generation, so it was easier because we had a less distraction that you guys had have today. So what it means that we we didn't have the cell phone, <laughs> so we, <laughs> we didn't see a lot of things before the game. So we trained it, so we had our focus on the game. So the only thing that we had to, to think a part of the game, it was about our family. If everybody was doing good, if they got the tickets for the game or something like that. But today, you guys had a, have a lot of distraction. So before the game, you can see an Instagram, you, you can receive a lot of message from your parents, for your friends, for your, a lot of people that can uh, change your focus and change your mind for, for the game. So be aware with that. If you can protect yourself, your mind during this period of the game. So uh, talk to your parents, say, if it, there is something really important, just call me, don't send me a message. Don't look Instagram or don't, don't look something before the game. Believe me, it changes a lot to your game. Because if you see something that is really bad, it, it's gonna change your, the way that you're gonna play. If you see something really good or a part of the game, you think about to do that after the, the, the game. So it means a lot for you. you. Just 
trying to keep your focus, less distraction uh, if it's possible, and will be very, very good for you. Thank you. Guys, this is a very good advice, guys. That's a a very good. Go ahead. Um, out of all the teams you've played on, uh, which was your favorite? Well, I'm very happy with the all teams that I've played. Uh, I played for São Paulo here in Brazil. Then I moved to Italy and I played for AC Milan. After that, I played for Real Madrid. And then I went to the US and I played for Orlando. Four teams, one national team, so five jerseys. And every moment and every team in my career was different. I learned something. I, it was a different place to live, different language to, to learn, different culture to improve. So every place was really good. But the best place that I've played that I had the best result, it was in Milan. So in Milan, I won the Champions League. I won the best player of the, the, the world. So Milan, as a result, was the, the best place. But I love it to play in, in these, these four, four clubs. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, after, for, after playing for teams like AC Milan and Real Madrid, why did you decide to go to Orlando? Because I really wanted to play in the U.S. Uh, I, I really wanted to be part of this, this period of MLS. I knew that probably I didn't play in the, in, in the best period of MLS because it's still growing. But I wanted to be part of it. So uh, I wanted to, to improve my English. I want to live in a different country. Uh, I, I wanted to, to be part of uh, a very, very unique project because when I started with uh, Orlando City, it's, it, the, the clubs just started in MLS. So I wanted to see how to start a club from nothing, from the scratch. So I, I wanted some uh, personal, I had some personal motivations, I had some professional motivations. So I wanted very bad to play in. In the US and in London. I have a question. Thank oh. you. You're welcome. Do you have the World Cup trophy in Brazil right now? Uh, I just have a replica and I can show you because the real one is they keep it in the FIFA Museum in Zurich. And it's really nice because just who won the World Cup or the president of the countries or uh, chief of state can hold it. So I went to, to Zurich last year and they let me hold it again. So this is the original one. So there are a lot of replicas around the world. I'll, sh I'll show you the replica that I have at home. It's just a, a, a little one. So here is the, the replica. It's it's a it's a mini replica because the real one probably it's big like that. And it's just to remember when I when I can see that I, I can remember that I, I was there and, and I, I I won it. And, but this is the funny story because the real one, they keep it in Zurich, in the FIFA Museum. Yeah, guys, that's, that's not many players can do that, guys. Mm -hmm. Touch that trophy, guys. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very hard, very hard level to achieve. <laughs> Maybe, can, can I ask uh, Kaka a question? Yeah, um, no problem. You had... You had six years in Milan, I think, and four years in Madrid. Um, can you describe the the main differences in terms of the culture, the fans, the style of play? 
Um, what struck you? What, what was different in Spain than Italy, specifically? Well, in, in Italy, the support and the people, they are more warm. So they are more like a Italy family, you know, a lot of people behind and everybody wants to hug you and something like that. This is the part of the future. And when I moved to, to Spain, it's a little bit different. So the Spanish people, they are a little bit uh, tough. In, I mean, or more in, in their side. I have a lot of good friends there, but they're more closed. They, when you go to see a Real Madrid game, it's, it's more like a, a theater. You just see the applause or something, something like that. So you need to be more warm and singing during the day and jumping and something like that. In Spain, more like this way. It's very, very uh, competitive. They are very, they pressure a lot because Real Madrid is one of the best clubs in the world. They want that Real Madrid wins every game. So uh, I think the most of the difference is, is like that. Um, I have a question. Um, with David Beckham being the owner of Inner Miami, now would you like to do something like that with Orlando? Uh, I'm very, very close to the, the owner of Orlando, it's Flavio. Uh, when I went to Orlando, he, he, he proposed me to, to share a little bit of the club, to buy a, a, a small part of the club. But at that time, I didn't want that because I, I didn't want to play and be owner or something uh, like that. And so I asked him to wait a little bit. And I think at the time it was a good decision not to mix. It's strange to play with the owner. So I, <laughs> I could be the, the player. And at the same time, I was the boss of my teammates. Uh, in my head, it didn't make a lot of sense. So I, I asked him to wait. And when I, I decided to retire, I moved back to Brazil. And so I let that possibility a little bit uh, away. So for now, I'm preparing myself. I'm doing some programs, uh, studying a lot of uh, sports man management, and I'm waiting. I want to be back in the game in football one day, but I don't know yet in which position, which play. But for now, for me, it's just a moment to, to study and improve my knowledge because it's completely different to be on the field and to be off the field. Um, <laughs> Growing up, who was your favorite player? My favorite player? Now? You mean now or that I... Oh, no one no one the one that I played, it was Ronaldo Phenomenal, as I said. And now, uh, I love to, to watch a good players. So I love to watch Cristiano Ronaldo playing, uh, Messi, uh, Neymar. I think these three guys are the best for me at this moment. So I love to see they playing and I love to see and watch a good games. So I think all of you want to watch a good game and I'm a big fan of a good game as well. So every time that I see or heard that it's a good game on TV, I, I like to watch. I have a question. What is it like dealing with the press? This is a very, very good question because uh, we learned when we have, when, when, when I, I was in your age, we always learned that press is really bad. They just say bad things. They just, they, you have to be aware with the press. And it's really important to understand how is the system of the press and the news and how they want to, to promote, to sell newspaper, to sell information, to sell news. So this is the first thing. It's really important to understand the system and to 
make the system work for you because it's really important. I, wa I wasn't caca if it wasn't the press because if I score a goal and nobody talks about my goal, I score a goal every week in my team here, but nobody knows about that. And nobody wants to, to, to care about that as well because I'm not a professional player anymore. I'm just amateur player. It's really important to understand that. I have a lot of friends in press today. So I understood that and I saw that they could be my friends and I still can, cannot be involved in a bad situation as a give some information that wasn't good for my, my team or something like that. But the press, it's really important. It's really nice. It's really nice when you understand how it works and how it works for how it can be good for you as well. I have a question. Come on. What was the worst injury you had? Uh, I had two bad injuries. One in my left knee, uh, surgery after the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. So I had this in, uh, surgery and I had to be off the field for six months. And I had another one that's uh, pubalgia. It's pubis. So this is really bad as well because you, you never know how it comes and how, what, what you have to do. So there are a few protocols or few trainings to, to do for, for improve for that injury. But it's really bad because different of the need that you can have a surgery and just do your therapy. For poops, it's really bad because sometimes you don't know what to do. You don't know if you have to, to strength. You don't know if you have to just uh, be quiet or it's, it, it's really bad injury. Um, I have a question. Um, when you were doing your speech, um, when you won the Ballon d'Or, were you like nervous or excited? <laughs> I was very, very nervous, um, but I was really excited as well. Uh, it's really important to not when you're going to speak or do something. It's prepare a little bit. So be ready. It's quite a... Uh, of a game for us. We train the whole week to play on Sunday. So what, what we are doing is increase our chances to win. So to speak is the same. I was preparing, I prepared my, my speech, a few concepts about what I wanted to say, but it's really important to, when you arrive there, you feel the, the, the atmosphere, you feel the, the, the situation and just talk what comes to, to your heart. So I was ready, really nervous, but I, I, I was ready for the, to speak in that situation. Um, I have a question, Ethan. Um, did, like every time, like most of the time when you scored, you, said, you used the pull up and it says, you used to say, I belong to Jesus, that, but that seemed really cool. Why did you do it a lot? Well, uh, Jesus is always uh, part of my life. So my career, my personal life, so everything, because it's the, the base of my life comes from the Christianity, comes from, from Christ. So the values, the, the concept and, and everything. And I started to play as a professional. I used it to use the, the sports and football as a platform to say what Jesus did in my life, what he's done in my life. So... It's something, uh, it's kind of a, a good friend, very, very good friend that you want to, to connect with the other, other people. So when I score the goal, when I celebrate, point my finger to, to, the, to the heaven, it's not to say that, uh, that Jesus scored that goal. It's just to say that it was, I'm very thankful to have that, that opportunity to do something that I really, really, uh, enjoying that I loved and just to, to be very thankful to, to that opportunity and so every time that I can that I could or uh, I, I could show the, 
that I belong to Jesus and present this nice guy that I, I love to the others, it's a great opportunity for me. Hey guys. I have, I have go ahead, go ahead, buddy. Uh, what was your favorite goal that you scored? I think the 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 my favorite goal is the that one that I scored against Manchester United in the Champions League 2007, the same final. Uh, the goal was in Old Trafford. We lost that game 3-2. It was an unbelievable game, but I scored this this goal, the second goal of Milan. For me, it's the best goal that I scored in in my career. Thank you. Just a question, Kaka. You um. You know, you've you've played at the highest level, and it's been very interesting hearing from all of Cleverson's friends, um, you know, about about habits. So you know, you played at this very high level, and and now you've you've retired, and you can look back at your career. Um, just for the boys who you know, a lot of boys here want to be professionals and achieve what you achieved. Um, do you have any advice for them as far as habits that you had? as a youngster and then as a professional that, that you think helped you achieve what you did? Well, I think one of a good advice is to try to balance your life. This is, I think it's the, the best one because we are, uh, usually you're gonna push to, to the edges. So it's really important to balance your life. So it's really important to training. It's really important to rest as well. It's really important to eat well. It's really important to study. So it's really important in, in, in your age right now to balance. To, to how, how can I balance my life? Now you have a coach to help you with that. You have parents that can help you with that. So it's really important to get used to this situation because when you get older and adult, you have to balance yourself. So I think this is the, the best uh, advice. So you can put a, a circle and I have my spiritual, spiritual life, my emotional life, my professional life, my personal life. So everything you, you need to, to balance. Every time that you push or the life pushes you to, to some edge, uh, something is going gonna, is gonna to be wrong. So it's trying to do that. It's really important to train in hard. We, we learn that a lot. So training hard, training, wake up uh, early and, and go, go to, to the bed uh, late or something like that. But I think it's most important is to, to balance because it's really important to train, but it's really important to, to rest as well. It's really important mm -hmm. to go to the school to improve something different, so balance your life. And of course, when you're doing something, do with a very, very good intensity. That's awesome, thank you. Right. Thank you. Kaka, um, based on that, what you just said then, um, how have you replaced what was a large part of your life with not having any football anymore? How, how have you, has, has the balance, have you, how, how have you managed to remain balanced? Well, for the sports, uh, as I said, I change it. So I'm, I'm, I'm a runner right now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing, I'm training for the, for a marathon. So I try to get something that, uh, that I could enjoy and I still could be motivated and challenge myself. So, for training, it was that. For work, uh, I try to, to work with my things. So I have a personal uh, a family company in Brazil with my brother and my parent and my father. We do something real, uh, some real estate things in Brazil. I still do a lot of events around the world to play football or to go to some events, some games, something like that. That's I, I really enjoy as well. And so I put my professional life in that way. Something that it's really important for us when we retired, it's because we are, uh, we get used to the big event. So every week we play for 50, 60,000 people and a lot of others is watching us. 
when you finish, when you stop your career, uh, you have to retrain yourself to the uh, simple things be very, very uh, enjoyable as well. So I don't have the big event anymore. I don't have the, the games at the, the Sundays. I don't have the finals anymore. So if I got stuck with that, I, it was really bad for me because I was depressed. So I had to understand the situation. So now the big event for me is to have a coffee with a friend, is to uh, have a home school with my kids, is to show something for, for them, is to play with my, my son. So I just have to retrain my brain to, to have this, uh, to enjoy the simple things, the simple life that it's really, really good. And, and just a follow up. Just a follow-up, sorry. How does someone as well-known as you um, train in the streets of Sao Paulo for the marathon? <laughs> so I, I live nearby a, a, a park, so I try to go to the park and training. In these days, I'm, I'm training, uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, on, the, on the treadmill inside. Tre treadmill at home. Yeah. But it, it's it's. It's funny because the first time that someone sees me personally, they say, wow, it's Kaka. The second time, he says, hey, Kaka, I saw you the other day. Can you take a picture? Oh, yes. The third time, hey, Kaka, you are my brother. Oh, what, what about the game or something like that? So now when I go to the park, everybody, it's, it's just a friend. It's just, say, hey, hi, I'm here again. So... It's, a, it's just get normal to, to go there and to see people and they get used it to see me as well. Um, I have another question. How many miles do you want to run in the marathon? <laughs> you know, I don't know, in miles it's 42 kilometers. Uh, how do you, how, how 25 many? miles. 25 miles. So it's 42 kilometers. And I'm training to do that uh, uh, under four hours so i think that that one that used to to win the marathon they can do that in two hours two hours and and something and i'll try to finish that in less than four hours if i can i have a question come on uh at what age did you realize you wanted to become a professional soccer player when I was 15, when I was 15 years old, I, I called my, my parents, my father and my mother, and I told them, look, uh, I really want to, to get focused in to be a professional player. I don't know if I, I, I'm going to be. There are a lot of kids here. They want to be professional soccer players as well, but uh, I want to try. So I want to, I'll, I'll keep studying, but studs going to be uh, secondary. When I say that, it's just the, the school is not my priority anymore. In a way, the strong school or something like that. I want to finish the school, but I, I'll, I'll get focused in, in training. So I had to train in morning and afternoon and go to school in, in tonight uh, uh, during the night. And so when I, I was 18, I told to my parents, look, I just finished the school. I want to have uh, one year to try to get a, to start with a professional player to play for the, the first team of Sao Paulo. If I can't, I'll go to the university. And they said, it's, it's okay. You can rest from school one year. You try to be a professional player. And after that, we will we'll, we'll see. In that year, I debuted with Sao Paulo and I start my career with Sao Paulo. And then I stopped it my studies a little bit and when I retired I got back and so now I'm I'm a student anymore uh, again so that's good Kaka it's Fred here can you hear me yeah hi yeah on top of that how you doing I'm in the 14 coach no. <laughs> so on top of that can you do you have any story about uh, how how did you to make professional, for example, you was on 18 and you went to professional. Any story on that, on top of that? 
actually that story it's really nice for me because I was in the the under 18 of Sao Paulo and I was playing first team and I got three yellow cards so I, I was off from the next game and I went to my my grandparents house here in Brazil they used to live in Caldas Novas Caldas Novas is a place in Brazil that the, a lot of clubs a lot of swimming pools that the water comes from the, 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 the earth. So it's a really nice place to, to visit and to know. And when I, uh, I was uh, playing with my, my brother in a swimming pool, and then I jumped in a swimming pool, and I, the way that I jumped, I, I, got, I hit my head on the, on the floor, and I broke my, my six vertebra of my neck. So this was in October. So it was October, November, and December. I was out of the, out the the field. I couldn't play. And when I went to the doctor, I said to the doctor, "Look, doctor, uh, when I can play again?" And he told me, "Kaka, you, you you don't understand. You didn't realize what happened with you. You just broke your neck. A lot of times, when it happens, uh, the person doesn't doesn't walk again." So today is not a day to questions. Today is a, is a day to, to be thankful. So in that day, uh, I realized that it was really bad what happened to me. And I was very thankful for God that I, I, I was walking. Mm -hmm. So I was off the field for two, two months, November and December. So January, January 2001, I got back. I started running and I started playing to, for Sao Paulo under 20 under 20s but i was on the bench not playing too many games and then it started another competition for the first club for for the first team the name was hill sao paulo it's a combination of the best clubs in sao paulo and the best clubs in, in rio and at the time the first team was starting to to be building and so the the, the coach for the first club the first team asked for the under 20s the one forward and one midfielder and our coach said look I, I cannot give you my forward right now because uh he's the the captain of the our team so i'll give you our second player who is in the bench but he's he's very good as well and he can help you and who was the second one on the bench <laughs> oh, <sir>. oh, you. <laughs> i started i went to the the game of the first club for the first team and I started to play with, the, with them, and I never got back to the under-20s. So it's, a, it's really nice for me. It's a very good story because sometimes we are in a position that we uh, – I'm on the bench, I'm very sad, I'm not yeah. playing, but we, we never know what can happen. So I just mm -hmm. went to the, the, that game because I was on the bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Somebody has another question before we end that conversation, boys? Who want to make the last question here? Come on, guys. What was your favorite jersey? My favorite jersey? Uh, I, I, I love the jerseys that I, I have the, in, in, and I played. So I don't have a, a special one. So Orlando is really nice, the purple one, Real Madrid, uh, Milan, Sao Paulo, it's really beautiful. The national team, when you, when you wear the, the national team's jerseys, it's just something really, really special. So actually, I don't have a, a, a special one. All of them is very special for me. I have another question. What was your most memorable game? Uh, I think it, it was the, the Champions League final in 2007 because in, I, I played the, the Champions League final in 2005 as well against Liverpool. If you guys have a chance to watch this game, try to just mm. uh, watch the highlights. It's one of the best games in history. You, we were winning the game 3-0 in the first half. In the second half, Liverpool... Uh, scored three goals in six minutes. So they tied the game. We went to the over the overtime and PKs and they won in the PK. So really, really nice 
but unfortunately i was in the 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 part that lost that game in two years later we we repeat again so we played against liverpool again in champions league final and at the time we won to one and it was a very good feeling and emotion because it was my first uh, champions league and i was really really happy for that so i think it's one of the the best uh memories that i have playing a, a final in a, in a good game thank you one more question what was the best memory you have in mls the best memory that i have the three years in in mls was really nice but i think the first game the first game was really amazing for me because uh, a lot of people said to me look Americans, they don't like football, they, uh, soccer, they have their own football, they like NBA, MLB, hockey, football is going to be the fifth sports for Americans, uh, they, they are not going to show up to, to watch your games or something like that. And I said, okay, I accept the challenge and I want to, to go and play for, for Orlando. So our first game in MLS, the, st the stadium was sold out. 63,000 people was watching the game. It was Orlando City against NACFC. First game for both clubs in, in MLS. We were uh, losing the game 1-0 till the 43, 44 minutes of the second half that I scored a goal in a, a free kick goal. It was an amazing feeling, amazing uh, emotion and great atmosphere. So I think the best memory it was that, that first game. That first game gave me a very, very good motivation and to, to be in MLS. I have another question. How did it feel when you missed a penalty against Andre Blake? Huh. That is really, <laughs> it, it's really sad. <laughs> Every time that you miss a, uh, a penalty, it's really, really sad. It's really, really bad feeling situation but you you get to used to that as well so as i said to you the only thing that we can do it's improve our chances to win so that that you can use that for all of the tests that you have in your life so either it's a uh, it's a uh, in in your school or it, it's in, in a game the only chance that I can score a, a penalty is training, 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 training. So every day I train that, but it's, a, it's still a, a bet. So goalkeeper is going to train as well. I just need to be ready. And when you have a responsibility to do something important for your team, you need to, to get that jersey as well. So it's a penalty. Give me the ball here. I'll try. So get ready for that situation. It's really good. And be ready because you're going to miss. You're going to miss. And you need to be ready to keep going. Because the, the, when you miss a, p a penalty, it's going to be a bad thing for you because you can be dead for, in that game. So I miss the penalty. Emotionally, I'm dead. I don't want to play anymore. I just want to go home. Or you can miss a penalty and say, okay, I missed it. So I still have time to do something and to change this situation. And so it's up to you. Just put in your mind what you want to do. I have a question. Come on. Did you ever pray before you even started a game? All the games. Every, every game I tried. To, I, I prayed. I tried to read some uh, Bible versicles before the game and be ready uh, spiritually as well for the for the game so every game i prayed not just for myself but for all the players for the other teams nobody nobody to get injured or something bad because at the end of the day we are playing of course we want to win but they want to win as well so it's understand how competitions can be fair and it's just my uh ad ad adversary in that game He's not my enemy. So understand the situation. It's really, really important because you're going to win sometimes. You're going to lose sometimes. It's part of the game.
They do. Awesome, boys. Awesome. Uh, Taka, uh, I want to say very thank you for joining us on that meeting. I think that's an amazing opportunity to kids uh, listen uh, and hear good feelings about you, about your career. Thank you very much for sharing this, right? Uh, we want to give all the best for you in your career, in your goals, in your future. Okay? And then um, we are here open to you when you come here in the United States and want to visit us. Uh, please come here and then and say hi for us. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us for that meeting. Tommy, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Clem. Um, Kaka, it struck me when you were speaking that when I was a young player uh, growing up in Scotland, we got, I got to a cup final and uh, only played in two. And one of the senior players said to me, um, as I was walking off the field at the end and we had won, he said, remember this, remember this day, because it won't happen very often. So what I would say to the young guys on the call, remember this call, boys. It's not very often that this will happen with, with someone such a consummate professional, humble, and, and has the way he talked about being prepared for things, about balance, it's so important to you as young players. So really, uh, thanks so much for taking the time. Um, to to and, and sharing your insights on on life and the game, it was fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Clever. Thank you very it. much. Thank this you. Opportunity, Tommy. Thank you very much. All the staff guys here. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank it's you. Not thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, great challenge thank you. for you guys. It's really important to respect your coach and. Be confident. Be confident that these guys want to, to teach you the best things. So respect for the, the coach and try your best. Just enjoy the game. Awesome, Kaka. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Boy, you. Don't forget it. Four o'clock, we have a virtual training, okay? Make you sure you guys are ready to prepare uh, for the training session. Sounds good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kaka. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kaka. Thank you. Thank you, Kaka.